Obama gave a speech rallying support for the Iran nuclear deal, and I think it's honestly one of the best speeches that he's ever given. Uh, I think he wrote it, which is not the case for a lot of the other speeches, uh, and I think he stopped playing around with Netanyahu and the Republicans, so let's watch a piece of it here. In fact, they argue that surgical strikes against Iran's facilities will be quick and painless. But if we've learned anything from the last decade, it's that wars in general and wars in the Middle East in particular are anything but simple. The The only certainty in war is human suffering, uncertain costs, unintended consequences. We can also be sure that the Americans who bear the heaviest burden are the less than 1% of us, the outstanding men and women who serve in uniform, and not those of us who send them to war. As Commander-in-Chief, I have not shied away from using force when necessary. I have ordered tens of thousands of young Americans into combat. I've sat by their bedside sometimes when they come home. I've ordered military action in seven countries. There are times when force is necessary. And if Ron does not abide by this deal, it's possible that we don't have an alternative. But how can we, in good conscience, justify war before we've tested a diplomatic agreement that achieves our objectives, that has been agreed to by Iran, that is supported by the rest of the world, and that preserves our options if the deal falls short? How can we justify that to our troops? This is the strongest non-proliferation agreement ever negotiated. And because this is such a strong deal, every nation in the world that has commented publicly, with the exception of the Israeli government, has expressed support. The United Nations Security Council has unanimously supported it. The majority of arms control and non-proliferation experts support it. Over 100 former ambassadors who served under Republican and Democratic presidents support it. I've had to make a lot of tough calls as president. But whether or not this deal is good for American security is not one of those calls. It's not even close. Perfect. Nailed it. In all seriousness, it's like, you know, a progressive blogger wrote it for him and just laid out the facts and said, hey, how about you go point by point and you attack every single argument that they've made? And that's exactly what he did. I obviously didn't have time to show you the entire speech or to show you a clip much longer than this, but he actually outlines... Like, here are the arguments that we've seen so far against the deal. And he, and he goes one by one, and he just explains what they are, no straw manning whatsoever, and then just knocks them down. And that's exactly how you're supposed to do it. And you're supposed to be aggressive, and you're supposed to make your case. And you should make it appear like an issue that's not debatable, because it's not debatable. What is the alternative? Obama's right when he says, make no mistake about it, these other guys want war. That's what they want. The whole purpose, he says this at one point too, he's like, the whole purpose of putting the sanctions on in the first place was to eventually and inevitably get them to sit down at the table to agree that they do not want and they will not ever get nuclear weapons, and that's exactly what we got here. What the fuck is your end goal? What kind of game are you playing if you're still in favor of keeping the sanctions on? Are the sanctions the goal in and of themselves? So in other words, you're just saying, hey, I want the people of Iran to suffer endlessly because fuck Iranians. Is that what your argument is? And then he even goes on to explain, they say, hey, we want a better deal. That's what this is all about. And Obama's like, 
what kind of a fucking fantasy world do you live in where it's, it's that simple in the process of negotiation? Better deal. We want a better deal. And what do they mean when they say we want a better deal? We want Iran to have no nuclear facilities in any way, shape, or form. And what's the reality about that? That's actually against international law. The U.S. doesn't have the authority to go in there and say, hey, for scientific reasons, you can't enrich uranium. And for power for your power grid, you can't enrich uranium. We don't have the right to do that. But also, let's be clear, that's all they can do under the deal anyway, is they have hard caps on their uranium enrichment. So all they can enrich for is for research and for power for their power grid. And we have 24-7 inspections. The IAEA gets to inspect everything. And it la it's a 15 years this deal is in place. So to say... It's not a good enough deal. Well, what the fuck do you want? But that's the point. There's nothing that will satiate them, whether it's the Republicans or whether it's Netanyahu. Iran could come out tomorrow and say, okay, we decided we don't want to have any nuclear facilities, even for scientific research, even for power for our power grid. Do you think that that would stop Netanyahu from uh, being aggressive and being a warmonger? Do you think that would stop people like Louis fucking Gohmert or Duncan Hunter, for example, who said that we should nuke Iran just to send them a message? You think they'd go, oh, well, you just gave us everything we wanted. We now give up. No, they'd still be using the same talking points. Oh, well, we don't believe them. We think that they put their nuclear uh, plants underground. And either way, we should attack. Let's attack, 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 attack. So I've said this before, but if the Democrats in America are uh, on the right page and they want to do a peace deal, and the official stated position of the Iranian government is that we want to do a peace deal and we signed on to the peace deal, that's exactly what fucking happened. So the uh, Iranian government is for it, the Democrats in America are for it, and the only people who are against a peace deal are the Republicans in America and uh, Netanyahu and Likud and the further right-wing parties in Israel. Who, who's really the bad guy? Now, I mean that. On this issue, who's really the bad guy? And Obama's being crystal clear and being accurate when he says, the rest of the world is like, what the fuck, how can anybody oppose this? But Netanyahu and the Republicans are like, oh, we still oppose it. And listen to Obama, man, he's saying, hey, assholes, I've ordered one form or another of a military strike in seven countries. I'm not some kind of dove. And you guys know that pisses me off. I wish he didn't uh, do interventions in that many countries. That's horrible. I disagree with that. But what he's saying is, don't you fucking question my hawkishness. Uh, most establishment Democrats today, unfortunately, are way too hawkish. So what he's saying is, I'm not some sort of, you know, non-interventionist dove, but I'm also not a crazy person. I also don't want to unnecessarily destabilize the region even more when we're, our main enemy in the region is supposed to be ISIS. And who's a bulwark against ISIS right now, you clowns? The Shias. So Iran, the Shia militias, obviously the Kurds too, but the Shias are one of the biggest forces in the region that's fighting ISIS. But see, the thing is, the Republicans in America don't even know that, and Netanyahu doesn't give a fuck, because in Netanyahu's mind, ah, they're all the same. He said it. He said, uh, you know, the Shia militias, or Iran is just as bad as ISIS. He said Hamas is, is ISIS. Meanwhile, Hamas is also fighting ISIS. I mean, it, to him, they're all the same, so... They are the warmongers. Netanyahu is the warmongers, is a warmonger. The Republicans in America are the warmongers. And I don't think he's necessarily wrong when he says this is the strongest non-proliferation agreement ever negotiated. Not because I know all the other agreements negotiated, but I do know that we almost got 100% of what we wanted. And all we have to do is lift the sanctions, which means we give them back some of their own money after they prove that they're agreeing to the deal and they're meeting the provisions. I mean... How can you get any better than that? And uh, I have to admit, I really do like the fact that he he finally took a little jab at Israel. I mean, come on, man. How unreasonable can they be? We're talking about we funded Iron Dome for Netanyahu and for Israel. We give them billions of dollars a year, uh, and they do whatever they want with it. Mostly they just buy our, uh, our weapons, and it's part of the military-industrial complex, and the cycle goes round and round and round. But in essence, they get whatever the fuck they want. I mean... Uh, Obama even offered more money to them after the deal. He said to Netanyahu, this makes you more safe, but if you want even more money, here, here's more money, just shut the fuck up. So time and time and time again, we've backed them up. In the latest incursion into Gaza, which shouldn't have happened, where Netanyahu killed 75% civilians and did all kinds of war crimes, the U.S. government backed them up. We, we've done everything they've wanted to, at, 
things I'm not in support of. We've gone way too far in our overt, over-the-top support of anything they do. But what does Netanyahu do whenever he gets an opportunity? He spits right in Obama's eye. I'm going to oppose this deal because I'm the one that wants war with Iran. So I like that Obama finally called him out by name. And Obama, at another point in the speech, he said, Do you guys not know that Iran is fighting ISIS? How silly are you? So I think this is one of his best speeches. I really do think he wrote it. I think he told the advisors to piss off. And Obama, I just wish you were doing this the f your first year in office or you started doing it your second year off in office or whatever. Because once you stop playing that stupid, bullshit, centrist game of, oh, I'm going to try to make everybody like me. Once you understand that some people just fucking hate you and they're never going to like you no matter what you do. Once you understood that, which was pretty early on in the first term, you should have said, fuck it, gloves are coming off, I'm going balls to the wall here. But he was very soft in his first term. He's been more aggressive here in his second term. He's done some fantastic things, the Cuba deal, the Iran deal, uh, the immigration executive orders and things like that. I'm not taking anything away from the positive things that he's done his, in his second term, but I, I would have liked to see a lot more of this because I think it's going to be effective.